welcome back to the channel. So we are going to get back on this uh, trailer here at the shop for a few minutes. So we ordered these hinges off of uh, actually Amazon this time, not eBay. So a lot of times I use eBay. Uh, me and Mike were both kind of surprised that when we jumped on eBay to look for aluminum barrel hinges, that it wasn't hitting on Mustard much at all. So uh, normally we would rather order from either eBay or Amazon and not just like websites. Um, I don't know when you're set up and your cards on file and you know that these giant monster companies back your purchases it's a little easier to deal with than ordering somebody directly off their website and i have explained before how most people that own websites also sell on amazon or ebay so it's not like you're cutting uh the small guy out uh you're just buying through a large uh, company um so these come off of amazon they have the grease fittings on the top of them and then uh Nice spacer between them. Anyway, this is what Mike wanted. This is all in Mike's head uh, that he's gonna fab these up. So we're gonna go on here this morning, cut out what we gotta cut out, make some brackets and uh, get these hinges on here and then get the winch plate welded up real fast. And then uh, I'll have Mike hold the bolts so I can get it tightened down. That way pretty much I can do everything else by myself at the house. The only other thing we had to do real fast before we start on this door is we have the winch up there in the center, if you remember. So we, I wanted to take the winch mounting plate that came with the kit that they use uh, that you can mount the winch to stuff. And we're just gonna weld it up there to the bottom. So we're just gonna take this plate, that plate right there. And we're gonna just put it up here and burn a weld down this side and then burn a weld down the little leg that sticks off of it. And then, of course, your, your bolt go, will go through that steel plate into the bottom of the winch. So that sandwiches the plywood. The plywood is screwed to the floor, but I want 100% trust your plywood. That's the reason why we're welding uh, this plate there for a little extra tying everything in, even though Mike said he feels confident that you would be perfectly fine uh, with just mounting your winch to your plywood. But I'm also going to, this is not a boxed in beam. This beam is boxed in, so this is open on the back side. I'm going to through bolt two bolts through the plywood and the beam also this weekend to help uh, tie the plywood down to the floor of the trailer just to really tie everything together so it's nice and strong. I just got a feeling that I'm gonna be winching the car in the trailer in front of everybody and everything's gonna break and the whole sheet of plywood is gonna come slinging up. Yeah, we're, we're the, cabinet out and the cabinet and everything and the car is gonna start rolling backwards back down the ramp. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. Da, 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 da. Hey, I never asked you. Yeah. You like guacamole? <laughs> oh! Run, run! Oh God! Run! 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 But at least the good thing about that is if that does happen, then we'll know that we needed more support. <laughs> right. So y'all just gonna have to part in the fan noise because it's 100 degrees. Uh, this is the little rod that you have in these style hinges and all it does is it runs down through this and then in, you know, through these and that's what your whole door pivots on is basically a little tiny rod that goes through all these. So if you watch my other trailer video, in the past, one of them, I showed the issues with this. So we're deleting this rod, getting rid of this style hinges, about to cut this out and put the barrel hinges in. All right, I had to go take lunch. I don't know if y'all got cookout where y'all are at, but my wife's from up north and she said they don't even have cookouts up there. Dude, if y'all don't have cookouts, you are missing out on freaking life, son. So uh, we got these things welded up before we went to lunch. So I'm gonna come back now and what we're gonna do is basically just put the, sadly, because I don't have time, put the door back together, stick four bolts in the frames or screw in the frame again. And that's gonna be it for this week. And we will take it uh, home this weekend, take it all back out the frame or back the frame back out of the trailer again, put it on the bench at the house, which now the comet's gone. So I could technically close the garage door up, turn the AC on and rebuild this door inside the AC. That's probably what's gonna happen. Um, we need to take the wood, the paneling out the inside, uh, the skin off the outside, and we need to reskin it, reply with it, do add a little bit of uh, wood to the inside of it 
and hang the uh, cubby compartment we have on it and also do like an aluminum kick plate on the bottom to add a little bit of strength um, and just to make it look a little better. Uh, so we got some work to do to the actual frame, but uh, we'll be doing all that at the house. So I'm going to get this door put back together and then we're going to throw it back in the uh, trailer. All right, here's what Mike uh, whipped up at the end. So everything's welded up. And I mean, these welds, this, he was explaining that this is like some cheap metal. And so it welded like crap that, you know, this actual piece welded a lot better. And Mike never claims to be uh, amazing at, uh, you know, his welds. I think he does a really good job, you know, way better than what I can do for sure. Cause I can't, I can't take weld. Um, but we brace them, uh, or he, you know, we come up with a design. Uh, we braced them back to the main frame so that you got some strength in here. It's welded on the back side. And then this one down here is welded to the frame. And then I also told him uh, on this, you actually have a piece of steel right here that runs in here that's one inch. And then you have another piece of steel right beside it that's one inch. And so I said, Mike, I said, instead of this is welded to the frame or this one, this one is welded to the frame. So instead of having all the strength in this little family, flimsy frame I was like let's weld a little tab on it and I'm gonna come through here and drill two holes here and then I'm gonna take those two screws and catch into the second uh, stud over here so that it you know braces this piece really freaking strong um, on it and then when we paint it we'll actually tape it so that the tapes over here and we'll paint the face of this the same color as the trailer so you don't really see these tabs 100% but I mean this thing dude it's been popping and flopping around for so long I mean this thing is absolutely amazing and like I said we're gonna rebuild all of this it's all gonna be brand new uh, this weekend uh, there's what he's got going on the insides like I said he welded the inside of that and it welded to the frame there so I mean this thing is uh, I'm very happy with it uh, you know originally all of this was bothering me how this frame was all tore up like it was really bothering me uh, when you come down here all the damage to this frame was just really bothering me and I wanted to replace it but um, we're gonna go through and clean up a lot of this stuff redo the seals around it um, you know bend some of that metal back straight this weekend after we get it back in the actual frame but it gets to the point where you just have to say that this is supposed to be a budget with that bill. being said if we sit here and clean up too much of this and change out too much of this for brand new parts because you can throw money at this thing all day long everything that you need for this you can find online it's just imagine it's just imagine of how much it costs it's just a matter of how much it costs um but then it gets to the point where well what was the purpose of buying a wrecked iea trailer if we're just going to run the bill way up now you could replace everything with new parts and still come out way cheaper than you would for buying the same size trailer new but you might not be on a budget, you know? So let's say, I don't know the numbers, let's use the examples. Let's say this trailer or a trailer was $10,000. Let's say you rebuild it with all high-end new parts. I mean, you build a really nice trailer, nicer than the $10,000 new trailer. And let's say you did it for $7,500, $6,000, even $7,500. Okay, you're cheaper than the $10,000 trailer. Your $7,500 trailer is nicer than a $10,000 trailer because you customized it, but you still spent $7,500. So that kind of wipes out, you gotta mark through the word budget because now it's no longer a budget. I mean, I guess if you got a ton of money, then $7,500 is a budget build. But to the average Joe like me, and I feel like a lot of my subscriber base is uh, we're not trying to throw um, $7,500 at a trailer that costs 10,000 new. Um, you know, and like I said, them are examples. That's not what this trailer's values or anything are. We originally paid four hundred and fifty dollars for this trailer. You can go back to the playlist of this trailer. I've got everything organized in a playlist. The order is messed up, so you'll have to sort them by date if you want to watch them in order. Um, but I have it where you know I showed we paid four hundred fifty dollars for this trailer, and when we're done with this project, I am going to break down what it costs to build this trailer, so you can see the final product, and then you can see what we paid for it. And um, I feel like I can get my hands on most of all the receipts. I might be missing a couple. Of, here and there for some metal, but uh, I'll have it pretty spot on. So we're gonna put this trailer back in its hole over here and uh, I'm gonna get back to work and then we'll get back on this thing this weekend at the house.